How do you prioritize what to do with three and a half billion dollars in cash? Well, as we close these uh, two transactions yesterday with MPLX, first was we dropped a billion dollars of uh, cash flow into MPLX, and then we also exchanged our IDR rights uh, for, for shares of MPLX. But uh, we've been very clear with investors uh, that we will continue to have a, a very large capital return program. Um, you probably recognize uh, Monday of this week, we announced that we increased our dividend 15%. Mm -hmm. And with, that was an acceleration. Usually we do our dividends in July, so we accelerated it to January. And then we'll continue to look at uh, buying back shares. But also we have some very, uh, uh, very good investment opportunities that we see in refining in the midstream space and in retail. So it's kind of the perfect storm for you because refiners have also really benefited uh, from the strong demand uh, and you've seen a nice uh, spread between W10 and Brent, you've seen nice exports. Is any of that four, almost $4 billion going to go back to the workers? Um, we're in that compensation uh, schedule right now. We are not doing a just a one-time uh, payment to the uh, employees, but we had a very strong year last year. And the employees will recognize that as we finish up our compensation for the year. I was kind of getting it. Are your unit labor costs going to start to rise materially? Um, I, I would expect, especially on the retail side, we're seeing unit labor costs uh, starting to rise. Um, so you also, so I, as I mentioned before, your business, though I think of it as three buckets, right? You got refining, right. you have the retail business, and then you have the stake in MPLX. Um, how are you going to unlock value there? Where are you going to do M&A? Where are you going to beef up? Well, first of all, on the refining side, um, you've heard of IMO, that uh, going to ultra low sulfur diesel across the chain and not having these bunker fuels available. We've been investing and will continue to invest between now and 2020 to be ready for this new strong demand in, uh, in ultra low sulfur diesel for all the shipping that uh, around the world. So that is a big place. And we believe that diesel demand will continue to grow. Uh, there was a surprise last year in that gasoline demand was up about a half a percent for the year when the expectations would be off about a half a percent. So across the board, we're seeing gasoline demand continue to be strong, and diesel demand was up about 3.4 percent. Uh, now, you're putting about $530 million into your uh, Speedway, which is the retail operation. Could you also be targeting acquisitions there since there's so many more weak players in the space? We continue to look at everything that's available in the retail space, and uh, there could be some opportunities there. Is the value good? Um, not yet there, or not there yet? It's very competitive. Uh, mm, the, uh, in the retail space. If you, if you look across the number of transactions that have been done over the last couple of years, it's a very competitive space. But we are increasing our, our capital in, in Speedway from 380 last year to, to 530 million this year. So the HES acquisition we made about four years ago, we have uh, pretty much rebuilt or remodeled most of those stores. We'll be putting some more capital in, but also building out in the Midwest. Uh, as well. On the call yesterday, you said that you see $70 oil and oil staying around $70. When do you see demand destruction? I believe at these rates that uh, and, and what the retail price will end up being, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape on, on the demand side. We're expecting demand this year to be flat to maybe up a couple tenths of a percent. But uh, you know what we have recognized in 17 with the growing economy, we expect the economy is going to continue to grow this year. And if, if you look at diesel sales, diesel sales are a good predictor of where the economy is going. As I stated, had a mm -hmm. strong 17, and we expect to see a strong 18 because that's getting the goods to market. And you need diesel to be able to manufacture and build buildings and infrastructure. Well, uh, but also you're going to have a unique insight into what the producers are doing, and that's the wild card. Uh, what are you hearing from producers? What are you seeing? Are they ramping up production? Are we going to get more out of them, particularly the Permian? Absolutely. Um, we're uh, strong in the Permian and very strong in the Marcellus Utica, mm -hmm. one being more of the crude oil side and the Marcellus Utica being the natural gas liquids. But uh, we're seeing the, the drillers uh, have a big pickup in their work. Also, the uh, wells that had been drilled had not completed yet are now going back and being completed, bringing that production on stream. So we had a 19% increase last year in production in the Marcellus and Utica, gathered and then fractionated and, and processed. And we're expecting to see that type of an increase again this year on the Marcellus side. So if that happens, how do we hit $70 and stay there for oil if you're going to see all that production? Well, that, what I was well, talking about gas. there was on the gas but, side. But in terms of the Permian too, on, you're seeing more. On the Permian, 
you really, Alex, if you go back and look at the, the fundamentals of the inventory, we really have brought the crude oil inventory down in the U.S. In fact, inventory across the world has really dropped. We're expecting about a one and a half million barrel per day global increase in demand this year. So if you look globally where the, the inventory is going to go, as well as here in the U.S., the incremental production, there's a, uh, almost a million barrels a day now being exported of, of crude, crude oil out of the U.S. to meet global uh, Yeah, but the export demand. ARB has closed because of the rally in WTI. So don't, in theory, we need lower oil prices in, the, in order to keep that ARB open and help the valve for production? And, and depending on what happens with Brent mm -hmm. uh, as well. And w while that ARB has, has closed, um, it, it, we're still seeing some uh, uh, production leaving the, the U.S. But um, we're expecting that, yes, the $70 or so in crude oil prices where I would expect to see that we close uh, 2018. And, um, but I also look at the, the total uh, inventory across the globe is really coming in uh, into a good balanced position, as well as gasoline and, and distillates. Our, our refined products uh, inventories are the best shape that they've been in in a number of years.